we are trying to solve our tension problem again by using oblique trig. So our game plan is going to try and find an oblique triangle. So let's gray out our diagram and overdraw our forces. So there's our T1, our T2, and our 572 newtons going down. We'll then superimpose an XY plane on this. So there's the XY plane. And now using our tip to tail method, we're going to move T2, and then move T1. And notice how we now have an oblique triangle with two unknown sides, and of course the given side, 572. Now we're going to have to sort out the angles so that we can calculate the sides eventually. And we're going to use our given information. And we should be able to see how this little angle up here, we can calculate as 180 minus the given angle of 162, or 18 degrees. And then we can notice that this angle, bounded by the yellow lines, is actually going to be the same as the angle between the 572 Newton force and T1 in our oblique triangle. That property is the vertical or opposite angles, so now we have one of our angles in our triangle. We'll do the same thing over here between the vertical and T2, so that's just 180 minus the given angle of 125, which is 55. So we can see this in purple now, and that actually corresponds to the angle between the 572 Newton force and T2 in our triangle. So here we have another 55 degree angle. And of course, once we've gotten two angles in a triangle, we can quickly calculate the third. Since we do now have one side of an oblique triangle and the three angles on the interior, we can use the sine law to solve for our two unknown tensions. So let's look at the T1 calculation. We take the first two ratios from the sine law, do our algebraic rearrangement, and we get 48996. Repeat the similar process for T2. We take the first and the last ratios, do our algebraic rearrangement, and we get 18483. So we can see that we got the exact same answers that we got last time when we did this question using components of forces, 48996 newtons for T1 and 18483 newtons for T2.